Well, good afternoon, everyone. We are so delighted that you've decided to join us for the chat with the grad dean and friends. Uh, this isn't quite like the Ellen DeGeneres show, but I'm sure that I'm sure I'm sure we could make it as entertaining. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Monica Powell. I'm the senior associate dean and graduate dean here at the Jindal School. And I always love to have these sessions because it is so much fun to engage with uh, my colleagues because um, you never know where the topics may go. But it is also, most importantly, a great opportunity to engage with our students and to see what's on their mind and see what they're thinking about and see the questions that they have. So there is a chat and you are welcome to go and just you know, throw questions at us. But let me first make a couple of, of just opening remarks and then I'm going to introduce uh, my colleagues that are with us today. OK, folks, we are sitting here at the end of March, uh, effective today in the state of Texas. Anyone who is 16 years or older can sign up to get a shot. So I'm going to be the, the vaccine cheerleader here and encourage all of you, because that is all of you, to get out there and get on a registration site, get your shots. Let's get up to that herd immunity and get safe so that we can get back to life like we want it to be. Um, it's been a remarkable uh, year. It's been a remarkable year and a month, um, but I'm ready for this year to be over. And I'm a betting person that all of you are ready for this adventure to be over and get back to life being more of what we want it to be and what we expect it to be. And we are expecting a lot for this fall. Um, it's going to be awesome. I mean, I feel sorry for all of my colleagues who are going to have to work around me because I'm going to be a bit uh, zany and out of control at the notion of getting to see the students and getting to put faces with names and getting to stand up in front of all of them and welcome them to orientation and to just really get to know our students the way that we're used to when we can see them face to face. So. Let's take charge of our lives and you can start by signing up today for a vaccine shot. So there's my vaccine crusade. So let me introduce my colleagues that are with us today. We are always delighted to have uh, Norma. She's the gal behind the screen. She's our video webinar wizard wizardress. I don't know what the female version of wizard is, but she's a person that pulls all the levers and makes everything happen on these webinars. She's with us today managing the chat and our screens. And then I have two of my colleagues here. David Whittefield is here. He is the program director for the supply chain program and the master's in supply chain program. He is also an assistant dean for master's programs here. So David is with us and I'm going to have him say hello in just a second. But I first want to introduce uh, also Garov Shekhar. So Garov is the friendly leader and trooper of the MS and Business Analytics Flex and Online Program. Um, he's also an alum, by the way, uh, join us. So first I'm going to go to David. David, you want to make a few comments of welcome and then we'll switch it over to Garov and then we'll get back to me and we'll see where else we go today. OK, sounds good. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, David Whittefield, as Monica just introduced me. And uh, yes, we're all excited about the fall and and what's coming up, the vaccinations being opening up and, and really looking forward to putting uh, COVID behind us, we hope, uh, at, at least uh, somewhat. But I uh, know very excited. Um, I know that I personally like Monica and uh excited about being back in the classroom with the students um it's it's so nice to be in person versus uh, this more virtual world not to say this is bad but it would be nice to be back in person again so Thank i'll, I'll David. turn it back to you monica so garov what kind of words of welcome would you like to offer hi everybody and thank you for that introduction monica well while you were talking about getting back on campus i could already see ourselves sitting in one of these um, chat with the dean inside the Davidson Auditorium. And rather than having all these fancy backgrounds, we have either the Jason's, the real Jason's Deli behind us or the real coffee corner behind us, mm -hmm. or the real hallways of Jason. Because honestly, when we go there now, though we see a few faces, it's just not like the way it used to be. And I am so happy that you talked about the vaccine because the way people are getting vaccinated, we can see the day when we can all stand in the same room without fear, 
safe and in, in, in a distance where we can enjoy each other's company. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's happening. By the way, since you had your amazing commercial about vaccination, we are also looking for volunteers at the UT Southwestern, UT Dallas site, which is set up at the Davidson Gandhi Alumni Center. That's an amazing place. If you have not been there, it's like clockwork there. But they're, they're always thankful and they're looking for volunteers. So please keep an eye on the emails that are being sent out asking for volunteers. And two hours of your time can mean a lot to the university and to all of us, our joint effort in making this community come back again in person, not on Teams. <laughs> yeah, Gara, thank you. And thank you, David, for your welcomes. You know, I think we are just, um, I don't know, in some ways I feel like we've been living in a movie. And it and it, and it's probably not a highly ranked Rotten Tomatoes movie. Um, there, there's been some interesting drama. There has been some interesting survival techniques um, that we have used. Um, but as I've told students before on these sessions, and I, I can't help it because there's a little bit of a mama bear in me, uh, it's really remarkable. You know, I think it would have been really easy for students to say, hey, I'm going to put my academic career on hold and I'm going to wait until all this is over and I'll get back to it the way that I want it and expect it to be. It takes a lot of courage to say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to use this time. I'm going to I'm going to stay on top of what I want to do. And I'm not going to lose a year of my life because of a crazy pandemic. And we're grateful that you have been in it to win it and that you've been embracing the technology. You've been showing up for class in your mask. And we're, we're really thankful for that. So other than today being the first day that all of you can register to take a shot, um, it's also the day that I believe the, the, the schedules are now live and students can actually see those schedules. So there's a couple of things I'm going to point out to Norma because she's fast with her fingers and getting things into the chat. But if you are a brand new student um, who is joining us for the first time this fall or this summer, um, we're going to be sending out a webinar here very shortly. I can't remember exactly when we are doing that webinar that's going to help you in how you register for fall. So be 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 wary of that or be aware of that, not wary of it, be aware of it. The second thing is, is that if you have questions about how this all works, you can go to the advising offices website and Norma will put it into the chat and you can go and look at a series of really short, little teeny uh, videos. They are 30 seconds, 45 seconds that show you, you know, where to find your appointment uh, schedule, which means when you can start registering, where you can find the schedule, where you can find everything. So thank you, Norma, for, pop for popping that up there. You can go to advising and um, and then down the right side in advising, click on registration. Mm -hmm. And then if you'll um, see below, you're going to see a whole series of what you do to prepare for registration and checking your enrollment date, uh, clearing academic holds, those kinds of things. But if you are a brand new student who is who is brand new, not currently enrolled, we're going to be sending you something because it's a little bit different for a brand new student. Um, and we want you to, uh, to be aware of that. Now, the other thing that we want you to do is you want you really want to do a little bit of your homework. And we talked about this in the last graduate chat session um, where you know more about your degree program. You don't want to go through your academic degree just having somebody tell you what to do. You want to be in charge of your degree plan. So you want to go if you're a current student to e-learning, check out your degree audit check out which courses you're still missing, get on your program's web page, look at the curriculum tabs, look at what courses are there, see what you're missing in your lineup, then look at the class schedule to try and sign up for those classes. The other thing that I would just throw out to all of you is please be mindful of course prerequisites. You, you cannot take a prerequisite concurrently with the class you must take the prerequisite before the class. So, you know, just be careful of that as well. Um, but all of the information is readily available at your fingertips. Your program directors have tons of information on the program websites. 
that can help you. And then also within e-learning, if you if you scroll down in e-learning all the way to the bottom and look under organizations, you will find your degree audit that is there that'll give you the courses that are required for your degree. So we encourage all of you to do that. So, so Norma, do we have any immediate questions before we go on to other topics? Um, nothing right now, but I'll, I'll be sure to monitor it. Terrific. So I also want to bring up a couple of important topics that have that have really, I hope students will be very excited about. And one of those is, and I'm sure you may have seen the inkling email that came from the university, that there will be a face-to-face -face graduation in August where students from previous semesters will be able to come and go through the full regalia, walk across the stage, uh, shake the hand uh, kind of ceremony, which I know for many of you is really important. And it's, it's actually really important for us. Um, my favorite, favorite, favorite time of the year um, to get to share in the joy of students uh, accomplishing the objective of, of obtaining the degree and getting ready to go out and launch their lives. Um, so if you haven't seen that, please be aware that those emails will go out uh, to people that were um, signed up for graduation and you'll be able to find stuff on uh, the university's website and search for the topic of commencement and you will find um, that information. The next topic that I wanted to bring up has to do with your program meetings. I, I hope that some of the people that are attending today might be ITM students because they do a really good once a month uh, program event that's called the ITM Hangout. So, uh, and all of the programs have different variations of that kind of event. I, Gaurav, what do you call it in uh, business analytics? What do you guys do in business analytics? We call it the town hall. It's a bi-weekly town hall. So these are really important events. And if you haven't been attending them, I can't encourage you enough to do that. And let me just give you a couple of examples why. So last week I was a little bit of a voyeur and I popped into the uh, ITM hangout that was going on. They had an alum who came and did a presentation on how she traversed getting into Microsoft. And it was unbelievable. And there was an army of students that were able to ask her specific and direct questions and she was able to tell students no don't do that or don't make your resume that way or you know really emphasizing some of the things that we tell students all the time that I think students don't believe us um, but I think that these program meetings are really important uh, Garb can you talk for a moment about your uh, analytics ones and just some of the topics that you've covered absolutely Dr. Powell we always have a special topic. It could be around your internships. It could be around your resume. It could be around a special event that's coming up. But uh, we always talk about some of the current things that are happening in that month. Something, some important deadline. For example, a couple of weeks ago, we gave students a heads up about enrollments, which are opening up this week, just to get them started. Again, what we have seen is there is no one medium that can serve all the students. It's like, you know, one size that fits all. Some students benefit from the events. Some of them read emails. Some of them benefit from our, you know, chats and all. But for us, the important part is to, to you as a student, what is something you must know? And then what are some of the topics which are good to know that we try to cover? Plus, if you have any questions, of course. Yeah, and I think it's a great way to connect with your program director. And by the way, you guys, I think that even after the pandemic is over, these are actually really convenient ways to communicate with, uh, with students in a single degree program. It is even more convenient to communicate this way than it is for us to have a program meeting in Davidson Auditorium or in a classroom that's on Wednesday at 4 o'clock because that doesn't work for everybody. This time where we're talking now doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but this technology gives us the ability to record it and then post it on our YouTube channel. And so um, Norma, would you go to the school? Can you show them how to get 
to the YouTube channel and where we have oodles and oodles of things that are posted that you can watch at 2 a.m. because you're young and you're youthful and you don't need to go to bed at 10, 17 like I do. You can watch at your convenience. So Norma, can you share that with them and show them where that is? Because there are a lot of really cool videos that are out there and some of them are specific to programs. I do a lot of webinars. The last grad chat that we did uh, with um, Angela is out there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so scroll down a little bit and you'll just see all of these great videos that you can watch either on your phone in the middle of the night, uh, but they give you a lot of great insight and information that you might find it started. Now, that particular one that Norma is clicking on right now, that's the recent one that we did where we went over slide by slide exactly the registration process. So it's really important that, that if, you, if you need information and you can't get somebody, you know, live, that there's tons of information out there that you can um, use and get a hold of. So, so please do that. And you can see that particular one is 104 views on it. That's a long presentation, Norm. I think that presentation is probably an hour in length, but it went into a lot of, of detail. So I encourage uh, folks to do that. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is, one, to congratulate students who've been actively involved in student organizations during this pandemic. Um, it's amazing. I mean, I, I mean, it's amazing. In fact, I think in some ways, doing things virtually has made it more convenient for people to attend. So I've seen much of our attendance at uh, org events go through the roof, where we would have had a good solid 40 there. We suddenly have 85 that are attending these events. So I popped into a couple of them, uh, as I'm known to do. And you guys, we've got major top key employers who are coming in and doing these sessions who are taking one-on-one -on -one questions with students. Um, I've had employers who were impressed by certain students in these uh, situations who then reach out to me and say, I want to find that student. <laughs> so, um, so you can make an impression even in those uh, environments. So David, what's been happening in supply chain around student organizations? Because you guys have three really big ones. Mm -hmm. um, so can you tell them about those three? Yeah, absolutely. Um, wait, there we go. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. And, and I just want to add a real a, a quick comment that ties in with the student organizations. The virtual environment has really been a, a big success uh, from an engagement standpoint. Uh, the current in, uh, supply chain students love to engage uh, via the, the virtual, particular teams environment uh, with me as a program director, but with, with each other as well as prospective employers. So the three uh, clubs uh, or organizations that, that Dean Powell referenced uh, is the Supply Chain Leadership Council, the APIX, which they just changed their name now, is the Association for Supply Chain Management. That's their national organization or global organization now. So we now are calling it the ASCM. And then we have INFORMS. Um, we've had some great uh, recent uh, content. Uh, the a ASCM has been hosting a global case competition in which we have two not one, but two supply chain teams made up of both undergrads and grad students that are competing. Um, they made it to the final four. I haven't heard the outcome yet, but they are competing in that. The second is that just this past week, the INFORMS group, uh, they hosted the, the senior vice president for sourcing from FedEx, Sue Spence. Uh, to talk about what's going on at FedEx, what's going on in the sourcing arena, um, and what, what to expect in upcoming trends. And this is just the most recent examples uh, of what's going on. Um, the, the Supply Chain Leadership Council is continuing to have um, senior level executives coming in, doing these virtual sessions. So uh, back to your point, Dean Powell, we're seeing attendance in these across these organizations 80, 90, sometimes even 100 plus based on who they are um, because of this. So that's kind of what's happening uh, with those organizations and to see how the students are engaging with them. Yeah, I think uh, I think students think that in a virtual world you're invisible, but you are not invisible in a virtual world. So um, get out there and get engaged. And if you haven't been, then, then be sure to do that as, um, as the semester advances. You know, many of our degree programs have these leadership councils 
which are really great opportunities to build leadership for your resume if you haven't. Most of those that have these leadership councils, you need to apply uh, to be selected. And so it's competitive, but it's a really good investment of your time. And speaking of that, um, you know, the Dean's Council is another great organization uh, that you should consider as well. Uh, we'll be seeking new members of the council for this fall. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody should get ready for the Owlies, uh, the big annual um, award ceremony that the school hold, holds. The Owlies stand for Outstanding Worthy Leaders Involved Exceptionally. And if you've ever been walking on the bottom floor of the building, you'll see that really shiny, beautiful owl that is in our courtyard that has somewhat become our mascot here in the management school. Because after all, we are all really wise. Wise is, of course, the name of the owl. Uh, but we recognize incredible student uh, students of the year, undergrad and grad. We look at most likely to be CEOs, some service awards, faculty um, uh, of the year awards, um, student organizations, student leader of the year awards. So please join us on April the 14th. You guys will be getting some emails about how that will happen virtually. But in the meantime, Figure out how you get yourself involved. You never know, you might be a recipient of one of the alleys in the future. They are highly coveted uh, trophies. So Norma, tell me how we are doing with regard to any questions. So do, we do have a couple questions um, that I'd like to ask. Um, the first one is um, the degree audit information for this particular student shows is unavailable. And so they were wondering if you could talk about like where that degree audit information would be. So send an email to jsomgradvising at utdallas.edu. And Norma will put that in, um, in the uh, chat so you have it. Send that to them and tell them e in e-learning, in your e-learning account, you do not see it. But if I were you, I'd go back and look very carefully. And if you've clicked on degree audit and it says nothing available, then you want to send that email so they can look that up. And when they go to e-learning, I know typically it's their classes listed at the top. Is is the one for advising a little bit lower down? It is lower down and it's in the middle. I think it is under the word organizations, which is yeah. a strange place for it to be. Uh, but but that's where it is. Perfect. And then the next question is, we've had some people who did see the president's email about fall 2021 instruction and the types of classes that we'll be offering, but we've we've received a question about if asynchronous will still be an option. So asynchronous is not going to be an option. Now, if you were in a, a fully online class, that's a really good question for whoever asked it. Um, there are three modes of instruction for fall. One of those is face-to-face, -face, which the ma grand majority of our classes will be face-to-face. One of those is hybrid, which is a very special classification, and we don't have very many of those because there are very strict rules around them. And then the third mode is what we call online, which means that your, your section number is going to say something like OW, mm -hmm. okay? It's going to have an OW in it. And that OW class has an extra fee that is associated with it as a fully online class. Only the OW classes, only the OWs, those fully online classes, that number three in that list that Norma has on the screen, only those, those are by nature, that last one, the fully online, it is by nature asynchronous. It is never synchronous. It is asynchronous. The other two will not be offered asynchronously. So let me just talk a little bit about why. So why, why not offer them asynchronously? Um, we did for the last, you know, little over a year, that was an option. Well, the reason that that was an option is because as you know, cause we've all lived it, lives have been turned upside down and there's been a lot of turmoil around um, just when you were gonna work and where you could get a job and, you know, maybe you had to, to, to quarantine or maybe you had to take on helping family members who had COVID. We wanted as much flexibility as we could for students to be able to engage and have asynchronous as an option. But as this pandemic is, as in my mind, coming to an end, that asynchronous is not required by the situation any longer. And quite frankly, 
it's a very challenging mode for most students to learn in because when you are in a synchronous environment, you're asking questions, you're engaging live, you are, you know, um, talking to your professors, you're talking to your classmates, and that really enriches the experience. So the moment is over uh, with regard to the need for asynchronous, and we need to get back to learning in a way that we know that more students can be uh, successful with. Um, so that's the reason asynchronous uh, isn't there. Now, does that mean that your faculty won't use some of these cool technology bells and whistles that have kind of been developed over the course of the pandemic? No, I think we're going to see a lot more innovation in classes um, so that we're getting students to do some things out of class um, in order to save in time class. Uh, so there's less time on lecture and more time on you know face to face stuff, but we'll see. I think uh, I think our faculty have embraced it pretty well. I think our students have embraced it remarkably. So I think that those are some of those few silver linings that come from COVID-19. So I've got some more questions for you. Um, this is kind of to piggyback off of the course modes question. Does this mean that we'll have more face-to-face -face classes in the fall or more options for face-to-face -face classes in the fall? Oh if yeah. So they're super excited about that. Yeah, there are tons of face-to-face -face classes. Uh, uh, they're almost all face-to-face -face classes. <laughs> let's just let's just go right there. Uh, make everybody happy. Uh, I think that our, our students want that. We want that. We want our building to be full of people and noise and students and activity and tussle and bustle and all that kind of stuff. So yes, when you look at the schedule, you're going to see face-to-face. Great. Um, this has to do with summer. Um, some summer courses do not have a professor listed. It just says staff. Will those professors be determined before summer registration opens next week? Not necessarily. Um, um, that's common. It's, it's not unusual for you to see staff on the schedule as faculty are shifting around their loads in terms of what they are teaching. What I can tell you is that all of those instructors will be great instructors. We just haven't figured out who's doing what yet. So it is likely that there will still be staff listed as faculty for those summer classes. Perfect. And um, those are all the questions we have for right now. Well, terrific. So David, let me pitch it back to you um, because you're in the classroom like I'm in the classroom. Gaurav, you're in the classroom too. What are the kinds of things are you hearing from students um, about what they've been through and what they can expect going forward in terms of launching their career post pandemic. Sure. I like to that. We're not quite there yet. Almost there. There we go. OK, I was just waiting for that to go live. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. So um, just for everybody on here to let you know, so my courses this this semester are the traditional. So uh, we meet in the classroom unless the, the entire student uh, class tells me, hey, we're not going to be there, then we'll meet virtual. So uh, we have that flexibility. But really what what I'm hearing is that um, it, this has been a little bit of a challenge for the semester, mainly because of all of the interviewing or all of the, the inquiry on the employment side has been done in this virtual environment. And one of the things that I've noticed as, as a professor is I've seen uh, some people who are very, very comfortable in talking to a camera and talking in this environment and some who are very, very uncomfortable. Um, and that, that's been probably one of the challenges to overcome. Um, maybe they're not uh, that way in, in, in person to person, at least for the folks that I've talked to, don't seem to be like that, but it can be a little uncomfortable to talk to this little white light or dot here on your computer and try to envision that it's an actual human being that you're talking to. Um, but that's been one of the, the bigger challenges. Um, but some of the positives have been that they've been able to reach out to m many more employers um, because of virtual environments. So maybe they had a top 10 companies that they wanted to see, but because of uh, constraints and vis um, visiting schedules or, and, and scheduling those together, it's been a little bit tougher to do. Um, just to give you an example for folks uh, on this uh, webinar with us today. Uh, I am one of those instructors. I love to get my class out of the classroom and we go visit facilities and we haven't had a chance to do that. Um, but we partnered up with Amazon who opened up not just for one of my classes, but all of my classes, all 170 students that we could all go into a facility tour and it was several facility tours all during the same time in this virtual virtual environment. So those have been some of the positives on it. And then the last thing I'll say about from a positive side of, of the environment we're in 
Now back to Dean Powell's point. The employers are watching and looking at our programs, and now we're getting bigger and bigger interest, at least on the supply chain side, of employers who historically never came to UTD, uh, never looked at our students because, quite frankly, they were just constrained by travel and budget. Now they're not. Uh, this past weekend, I was talking to a, uh, one of the largest national transportation companies here in the U.S. They're called Knight Swift Transportation. Uh, this gentleman attended one of our student organizations webinars. Uh, he didn't tell me which student organization it was. His name was Wayne Byers. Wayne's the senior VP for operations. He said was highly impressed with our students, highly impressed with our curriculum and asked me, how do we go about and build a partnership? So I'm now working with them to, to put this together so we can start doing it. So these are these are kind of the the, the pluses. And, and, and I say there's more pluses than minuses that have come out uh, during COVID. You know, David, that that is amazing because that's what we're hearing across the board in terms of employers. You know, our, our biggest program here in the Jindal School is our analytics program. So, so Garov, I'm going to pitch that same question to you and, and <laughs> ask for what, what is it that you see uh, relative to your vantage point? Absolutely. I, I would totally agree with what David just mentioned. In fact, one of the things that I've seen is is this overall comfort of people in the virtual environment. You know, before the pandemic, we would all be sometimes hawk-eyed and looking at the camera and the question would be, can you hear me? Or, you know, sometimes just talking to nostrils of people on the other end because they just don't know how close they are to the camera to being comfortable in, uh, in conversations like this. But definitely one of the things that have come up is, you know, we always talk about work-life balance mm -hmm. and I feel that term needs to be reworded and it's more like a work integrated life. Similarly, think about a school integrated life. So a student can be in a class and be running maybe some errands the next minute. They don't have to really, you know, do a lot of things that they have to factor for like parking or travel or, you know, making sure that they are in the building. So I feel students are taking advantage of that. Now, of course, you know, we have a lot of young population out here, so we we like committing ourselves to a lot of things. And we also see instances where people, people overcome it just because they feel they can accommodate that. But I'm seeing that people are able to not only accommodate things well, but they are getting comfortable. The other thing about the employers and, you know, David, what you just talked about that the senior executive, mm -hmm. we have a mentoring program with uh, 30 to 35 uh, C-level executives where everybody is paired with one student each. And we have had at least three of them come back telling us that this is the first time they're engaging with a UT Dallas student and it's one student per person. And they say, if this is one person, then how will the entire school be? Because you're right, when they go to our student organization and they see a small bunch of students, they're not just looking at that small bunch. They are thinking about the whole school, the whole university the same way. So it's absolutely important that we are able to put that you know, picture out in a way that people get enthralled by what they experience. Another thing that I'm seeing is, you know, there's always a confusion about what I should do and what I should have done. Very recently in my class, right after the spring break, the first question I asked, and this was an exercise of things that you guys did during the spring break and things you wished you had done. And there was a lot of fun things that people had done, but always I feel that students feel that, oh, I did not study for a certification. I should have done at least five more programming languages or I should have completed. You know what, at the end of it, maybe you are 500 certifications shorter than your friend, big deal. Yeah. You are, if you are on the path to learn something new and you're able to learn it well and apply it well, it's good. Now, one of the questions that definitely is coming up in a lot of interviews is, and this is the HR's fun question. What did you do during the pandemic? If you said that you, you, you improved or increased your overall understanding about Netflix's catalog, that might not go down very well. <laughs> but... But if something that shows constructive development of your personality, you know, whether it is professionally from an academic standpoint, I think those things go down really well. So again, you know, you might have just done one certification or gone and done two MOOC courses. It's OK. You know, everybody understands that we have challenges. You know, uh, there is people say that, oh, I don't have um, not for me, but somebody else. Oh, I don't have a 4.0. Will that be a deal breaker? You know what, the, the, dis, the difference between a 4.0 or the story of a 4.0 and you not getting that or being there, it's always a story. 
And if you're able to articulate that story very well to people, that's what they need. Do you think they need a bag of uh, programming languages in your in their organization? They need a person who can add value and that experience and that they bring out from their organization. I am I'm sorry, you know, I'm just uh, reminded of a of a very well known quote by Steve Jobs here that they don't hire smart people so that they can tell the smart people what they have to do, but they hire smart people so that the smart people can tell Apple what needs to be done. And that's exactly what is important here. So I, I think that, you know, uh, David, whether it's supply chain or business analytics or any other major that we have here, we all are seeing some a lot of things which are very common. And, and the best part is our recognition in the industry, our recognition around the country has just gone up in terms of the talent that we have. So that's the best part about it. You are so right, Garab. You know, I love what David said and I love what you said. I'm gonna offer two more things. Uh, these are two bonuses, <laughs> two bonus comments. I think one thing from the pandemic that I want students to reflect on um, that, that I've certainly learned. You know, I think that we have this idea in the business world that, you know, we're smart and we can do a lot of things and we can do a lot of things all at the same time. If there's one thing that's come out of the pandemic for me is that the, the, the whole, it's a myth. It is a myth that you can multitask. It's a myth. I yeah. think it is, it, it is just a hundred percent not true. You cannot multitask. And I think that that's been one of the downsides of this virtual environment that we've been in is that a student thinks that they can listen to a lecture while they are working on another paper or they can engage in a student uh, group project while they're submitting their resume to Apple. And, um, and the same thing has happened for your faculty and for even deans. The reality is, is that we have one mind, we have two ears, but those two ears need to be focused with the one mind on the one thing and you will save a lot of time. You know, I tried to do it. I tried to do the whole multitasking. And if you don't, don't do that to yourself. You will get caught um, not paying attention. You will be caught not hearing the question because going forward, companies have saved an just an inordinate amount of money by doing many things virtually that will never go back to face to face. And you cannot find yourself in an important team meeting in the future where you're multitasking on something else and you get popped the question that you don't hear because the people that are truly paying attention are going to get the benefit there. So I just want to throw that out. And then the second thing is to a comment that Garov made and I got a little bit uh, chuckly, I tried not to chuckle out loud when you came really forward with the eyes, you know, <laughs> because I think that also this environment is here to stay. Yeah. And if you are one of the students who is not yet comfortable in this environment, get over it. You don't have a choice. Your employer is going to be expecting you to command this space in the same way that you would command space if you were talking to them face to face. Mm -hmm. So whatever your hiccup is about being comfortable, whatever issue you have with um, turning on your camera or the concern that you have about being able to just speak extemporaneously, you know, when you're in a team meeting in a classroom and you are all meeting together face to face, you don't script out what you say. So why should you script out what you say in this environment? You've got to learn to be able to speak as fluidly and as extemporaneously in this environment as you would face to face. And for those students who have that rigidity, yeah, you're going to be a great performer. You're going to do good things, but it's those students who can do the good things, be the great performer, who can also command this world mm -hmm. because this world isn't going to go away. It, it, it is going to be used as an opportunity for companies to continue to put more money to the bottom line. So our virtual world won't 
disappear when the pandemic is over. Yeah, we're going to be back in our classrooms, but you know what? I bet you're still going to be doing Teams meetings. I bet your faculty are still going to be having study sessions with classes in this environment. I think there, I could also see faculty doing office hours this way to make it more convenient for students. You better get comfortable with the little blue dot on your camera because that <laughs> little blue dot's not going away. So I would just throw in uh, those couple of tidbits in addition to what David and Garov both said. But I am betting we have a couple of more questions. We do. Um, so this question has to do with summer. Um, we talked about course modes for fall, but this person would like to know what course modes will be available for this summer 2021. So the, the same course modes that we had last fall and this spring will stay the same. So you will see on the schedule, you know, the face to face, the hybrid, the flexible, the remote and uh, the fully asynchronous online. So those continue for the summer, um, but we move to the three in the fall and only the three. The other thing to keep in mind is the school is probably going to be bringing its uh, its faculty and staff back into the building, um, you know, pretty quickly as people get inoculated. So our, even though you may be remote this summer, or you might be flex or you might be something else, the building will see a whole lot more activity and there will be more cars in the parking lot. Are we excited or what? Um, the next question is about fall. Um, once we start attending lectures face to face this fall, so the, that kind of traditional um, course mode, will we stop getting recorded lectures? So that's a really good question. I think it's going to be left up to the faculty member. Uh, but if I were you as a student, don't be thinking that that a recorded session is a way to get out of coming to class face to face. Uh, because it won't be. And I know that, and I know you're clever, you're smart. I would have thought the same thing, um, but but those days are kind of over. You can't optimize every aspect of your academic career anymore in that kind of way. So you shouldn't really have that expectation because there w a faculty will go back to potentially grading for attendance. Mm -hmm. And that's been removed from the last several semesters where they didn't penalize people for not being live in a streaming class, um, but that is going to change. We will revert back to participation, potentially being a grade in class and attendance being a grade in some classes. So you shouldn't count on uh, lectures being recorded the way that they have been here. I think it will be more of a random thing as additional information or to supplement or maybe a faculty member might record them and then give you access to those recordings in the seven days before a midterm. But don't think that that's going to replace you being present if, if class attendance and participation is being counted. Um, so a follow up question to the summer course mode um, question we had a little while ago. Um, so for summer 2021, is asynchronous still an option? Because um, this person says that they were told that it would not be an option for summer. No, I think asynchronous, from what I've been told, asynchronous is still an option for the summer. If you have a faculty member who's telling you otherwise, then you know, send us an email. Yes, and you can email us at jindal at utdallas.edu and we will be happy to uh, look into that. Um, but those are all the questions that we have submitted. Well, um, Norm, I really appreciate you uh, managing the chat and, and asking us the questions. And I really am grateful that both David and Garov would come to join us for this graduate chat today. This one isn't going to be as long as some of our previous ones because we aren't going into the real technical issues around uh, registration. But for all of you that are out there that are continuing students, there are a couple of final reminders that I'd like to throw out. Number one, if you're a continuing student, the scholarship deadline to apply for scholarships is May 1. We do not accept any applications after May 1. So please be mindful of that deadline. Every year I get some really sad situations that will you know, contact us and say, oh, please give me an exception. Um, we can't in order to make it fair to everybody else. So please, uh, please be aware of that. Um, the second thing is, you know, do be aware that there is a virtual graduation for May. So please attend that and then um, also be mindful of the, the one that will happen in the summer. And then also, um, you know, I think if there's one thing the pandemic has limited us, and I know this has certainly been the case for, for me in my life, is that it, it, it kind of crushed 
the idea of 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 dreaming about the future and what you're going to do and it just seemed hard to plan a family get together or a vacation or really anything because you didn't know what the limitations are i'm going to ask all of you to turn back on your dream machine and and get back to looking forward to things i think it i think that's been the hardest thing about this whole pandemic is not is not really feeling like you have control over looking forward to anything because everything is uncertain but i think it's time i think it's time that we put that hat back on and start dreaming about the possibilities of your career dreaming about the possibilities for your personal life um your vacation the car you're going to buy or um or or even something as simple as getting together with neighbors and having a smorgasbord meal outside or friends over for dinner it's time we start warming our hearts and our souls with um, the energy that comes from looking forward to things and having expectation and with that um, i want to thank david and garav and norma i have the expectation and i cannot wait to have all of you back in the building and even be interrupted by the noise of students. I, I just, I don't know, love that sound. So you guys get after it. The, the second half of the semester is gonna to come to a close quickly. Mm -hmm. Engage your professors on how you can improve those final grades. Don't delay in applying for scholarships. And if you have any questions at any time, never hesitate to send an email to jendal at utdallas.edu. And, and we will get back to you with an answer. So thank you, David, for coming. Thank you, Garov. Thank you. Thank you. And Norma, thank you. And, and we'll see folks at the next Chat with the Graduate Dean.